Marco. Hi, I'm Sven Bosaut. I am the director of the master's program in mechanical engineering at Alto University. And I will tell you a little bit about our program specifically and why I am excited about it. So um, it's a master's program in mechanical engineering. It is one of the larger master's programs at Alto University. Um, it includes quite a number of different topics. Um, so if we think about what is mechanical engineering, um, one of the interesting things about it is that it is about mechanics across a very wide range of length scales. Everything from the microstructure of materials and how the mechanics of, of materials is determined by the microstructure and, and processing to how individual components are, are made of those materials and how we design those to have the performance that we want from them, how these are put together into complex machines and how those machines fulfill their part in a system of systems. All of that covers is covered by mechanical engineering. Um, so I have some pictures here um, that illustrate that. Um, as it happens, it's not a coincidence. Th th these pictures are actually from uh, major Finnish companies and major employers of graduates from our, our projects. Um, the engine that you see there is a large marine diesel engine made by Vertsila. And the cruise ship there was at the time the largest cruise ship in the world. And these are designed and built in, in Turku. Um, so um, all of that is mechanical engineering. Um, that diversity is reflected in the degree structure of our mechanical engineering program. On the face of it, it it's quite a simple division, 30 credits of common studies, 30 credits of advanced studies, 30 credits of electives, and then 30 credits for the master's thesis. We aim at not only a diversity of topics, but also a diversity of what people will do with these studies. Um, there, there are four here on this slide that, that I think are worth mentioning to, to indicate that, that, that diversity. Um, there is the kind of a, a systems engineer who is making their career out of understanding and designing complex systems of different scales from atomic to global and putting all of those together. Um, I did not include the specialists who might have some understanding of the, who need to have some understanding of the more complex systems, but focus on a particular aspect of this. Um, then we also have entrepreneurial engineers who may, maybe start their own business to do something new or do something new within an existing organization, but take, take charge of making innovation happen. Um, we have engineering scientists who, who do the basic research that is necessary to do engineering and they do that in an engineering context and with an understanding of engineering applications. And for better or for worse, um, a lot of the companies that employ engineers um, also have their management done by people who came up through the engineering side of the business. Um, we do get students who are definitely interested in that aspect of it. Um, so we want to prepare our students for any aspect of these different kinds of engineering professions that they're interested in making their career in. So between the topic groups and the different types of careers that you can have, there, there is a lot of ways that you can go within the, this study structure. Um, instead of 
making some pre-selected choices that we think are suitable for jobs that we imagine we are giving our students the choice to assemble their, their own study path within that basic structure of common studies, advanced studies, electives, and then crowning that with a thesis. Um, so we have divided our courses into topic groups. Um, in, in the common studies, there's few enough common studies that you, you can tell the topic group from the title, but in advanced studies, the course codes um, are organized by topic group and the courses are listed by, by these topic groups. And these topic groups are based on research activities of, of our teachers. All our courses are taught by people who do both research and teaching. And all of our researchers do some teaching as well. Um, so from our side, that, that makes a lot of sense to organize it this way because courses within a topic group will be taught by people who, who know each other from their research work as well. But we believe that it's also a strong emphasis on particular career paths and particular areas of specialization. So it makes it easier to find related courses. But you do not have to choose courses from any particular topic group. You, you, you can mix and match them. They're only organized this way to make them easier to find. So the, these topic groups can be quite different from each other. Um, product development is, is focusing very much on the human side of engineering and on um, how you actually develop products that the customers will want. Um, so when I was a student, I, I was very mathematically inclined and I thought engineering was just about solving specific problems and, and that all of this touchy-feely human side was not real engineering. But the older I get, the more I see of engineering in practice, the more I appreciate that understanding how people will use a product and understanding what they really want from a product is the key to actually making a solution work. It doesn't, it's not enough to make it technically brilliant. It, it needs to actually do what would people want to do with it, or it will not have the impact that it could have. We do have a, a shipbuilding industry in, in Finland. And this is a slide that is used by my, my colleagues in marine technology that, that, that indicates that even within these topic groups, you, you have these multiple length scales and multiple aspects of it. And, um, there are multiple scales at which you, you can specialize in marine technology and have an impact on how shipping and passenger transport and cruise ships and ice going vessels are designed and, and ultimately how they will be used. Um, another topic group is mechatronics. Um, the idea of mechatronics is basically machine design, but with a recognition that this day and age, um, machines involve digital systems. Um, it, to design the digital systems properly, you need to understand the machines and to design the machines so that they can interface properly with digital systems, you need to understand those digital systems as well. So mechatronics is a field of engineering that includes any three of control systems, electronic systems, mechanical systems, uh, and computers. Um, you could argue about whatever the part that doesn't include mechanical systems, but does include computers, um, is still mechatronics. Maybe that little top of the triangle of, of that star shape should, should be lopped off. But, but anyway, um, it, it's this combined field that involves both um, digital systems and electronics as well as mechanics. Um, 
So within marine technology, um, there is a very well-developed path for um, learning about the context of maritime engineering and then giving these different types of specialization in naval architecture or Arctic marine technology or project engineering specifically for the marine industry or the kind of expertise in analyzing the specific types of structures that you have in, in ships, either for the structural mechanics of it or for their interaction with, with the water. Solid mechanics is one of the more hardcore um, analytical types of engineering. Um, it, it is the study of how materials and structures deform under the action of forces and external loading like temperature. Um, you would need to have a good knowledge of the theory of the mechanics of materials. Um, the simplifications of them uh, as bars or beams and plates. Um, you'd be using some combination of analytical, experimental, and numerical methods for analyzing the behavior of structures and material. Production engineering is another type of hands on engineering, maybe more, more practical and less theoretical, um, but it, it includes um, everything from different operations to actually make things um, to the organization of, of production in, in, in factories. Um, this very much includes advanced manufacturing techniques like 3D printing. Um, then we have a slide from one of my colleagues in engineering materials, but there's also my own uh, research topic. I'm more on the experimental side, but um, not, not, not my colleague is, is very in, into using modeling, uh, um, model verification to be able to do a lot of the design of materials from an understanding of microstructure processing properties relationships, and then being able to accelerate the iteration of materials design by doing much of it computationally instead of with painstaking experiments. So um, those were the topic groups. Um, if you have specific questions about any of these topic groups, then I would recommend getting in touch with one of the professors in, in that topic group. Um, but I may be able to answer some questions here as well. Um, so that's one aspect of it. Um, the, the other aspect of how you build up the study, individual study path is what what is actually contained in these. Um, so everybody in our program has to take a project course. And we have common studies project courses that are built, that were designed and conceived together with the common studies courses. So, so there is a lot of uh, possibility to reflect on what you have learned in common studies courses and then apply that in the project course that is going on at, at the same time within your studies. Um, um, within, we, we have different project courses and within those courses, you, you can choose a range of different projects with different topics. There is also project-based learning in the advanced studies. And if you already know that you want to take one of the project courses in advanced studies, um, you think that that is taking too much of, of your coursework in project-based learning, then, then it is allowed to take one of the advanced studies project courses as your project course. So, um, Common studies 
are intended to be the first courses that you take, um, give you a broad basis in mechanical engineering, but then um, also include students who are not necessarily specializing in, in that particular topic that, that the course is about, whereas the advanced studies are more specialized and aimed at the students who are specializing in, in those topics. But like I already mentioned, you can freely choose course combinations with advanced studies from different topic groups. You do not need to take all of the courses in any topic group. You just choose whatever makes sense to you. Um, if you are selected for our program, if we offer you a study place, then you will be assigned an academic advisor. And you can discuss with your academic advisor with which course combinations you're choosing and why you are choosing those and whatever those make sense if, if, you, if you want or need advice for that. And then the electives, um, we have 30 credits of electives. They, they are completely free electives. Um, any university level course um, that you have not taken before um, can be chosen for, for those electives. So you can use that to have some, some art in your education. Um, we have a wonderful School of Arts at Alto. Um, you can choose business courses or you can choose more mechanical engineering courses, and focus more on that. Um, as an international student, you will have to take some credits in languages as well. And our bachelor students have typically already satisfied that requirement in their bachelor's courses, but um, if you're coming from abroad, you, you will need to take some courses, some language courses. And then to top it all off, you do a, a master's thesis. The master's thesis is um, sort of a, a, a bridge between your master's studies and your future career. And some of our students want to go on to, to doctoral studies and choose to do their master's thesis in a research lab in, in the university. Um, many of our students um, have a thesis topic in, in industry. Um, and, will then have a, a good chance of proving themselves to the company uh, and continuing uh, in a, a regular employment relationship with that company after their thesis. Um, so I went through one of the um, meetings where we approved thesis topics and um, made a list of the kinds of thesis topics that are, are, are chosen by our students. Um, so there was one about fuel cells um, replacing internal combustion engines in, in, in cruise ships. Um, there were actually quite a few this particular month who, who did their thesis um, at Alto University. Um, I think that partly has to do with the pandemic making it easier to stay at the university. Um, and there was this manual of remote prototyping very uh, timely topic during the pandemic. Um, a technology and method for cleaning elevator hosting members during their lifetime with a Finnish company that makes elevators. Um, one of my own students who's continuing with their doctoral studies did their thesis on strain aging in cast iron. Somebody did hardware development of a carbon dioxide pumping device testing and simulation of energy efficiency of a direct drive hydraulic machinery um, in mechatronics. Um, the stiffness characteristics of the hydraulic cylinder system subjected to dynamic loading, um, heat flux sensors for fire applications. Um, the, that thesis was actually done at an other department at Alta University. Um, the, Department of Building Technology. Um, a thesis in Finnish. Um, you are allowed to write your thesis in Finnish or, or Swedish. Um, this was with a, a company that does advanced castings and precision castings. Um, 
then a contactless inverse method for fatigue size, for fatigue crack size measurements. So using digital cameras in combination with material testing, and bearing failure prediction based on a wear model, again for machine design. Um, something in product development about a antibacterial wound dressing derived from willow bark. Um, something about innovation. Um, systems and processes for creating dimensional drawings. Um, implementation of a short-term autonomous control system on a mobile robot. Again, mechatronics. Design of electric pod propulsion concepts for use in displacement crafts, so um, shipbuilding. Comparison of achieved fuel savings on ship by different wind propulsion systems using a three degree of freedom resistance model, um, again, for marine technology. Um, so if you look at those topics, you see that there's quite a range of technical things. Um, also more customer or oriented things, um, but, but, but all of them are at the forefront of technology and many of them are, are focusing on sustainability and, and human factors. So um, yeah, um, here again is a list of the topic group. And, I will now go through the chat and see if there are any questions there that um, I should answer. Um, can you apply for a master's degree in mechanical engineering if your bachelor's degree is in civil engineering? Um, I don't see why not. Um, maybe not exactly the same, um, but for example, here at Alto University, um, for, for many years, the bachelor's program for civil engineering and mechanical engineering was actually the same master's program. Students have some choices that, that, that they could make and make, make a different emphasis, but it, it was um, sort of the same degree that, that, that from the same bachelor's, you, you could go into your civil engineering or building technology, as it is called here, mechanical engineering. So yeah, um, you should explain in your motivation letter why you, you think mechanical engineering is, is right for you, but that should not be a problem. Um, Um, are there any scholarships for international students specific to the mechanical engineering department? Um, if, if you apply for a tuition waiver, um, then that, that, that will be specific to the study place that, that you are offered. Um, at the moment, uh, uh, as far as I know, we, we do not have any other scholarships than those tuition waivers. Um, but there are foundations that um, offer scholarships. Um, I'm not sure how to even point you towards those. Um, Maybe Kathy, you, you, you may have more specific information about that. Um, uh, so about the scholarships we have, you can, when you apply, you, if you are up to have tuition fee, you can also at the same time apply for scholarships. They are 
it depends how many tuition fee students we select, how many will get then the scholarship. It covers the tuition fee. And then there will be a new Suomi uh, scholarship next year for Holo Alto, but at the moment, unfortunately, I, I'm not very, uh, there are, it has, it's totally new. It will also cover some of the, the living expenses, but it will be few of them. But I, I guess if you follow the alt pages, you will find more information about that. But if you have a good, um, uh, good degree from your current bachelor, you have a good possibility to get a scholarship. And of course, if you happen to have, have a certain type of residence permit, then you might even get to be with a tuition fee. But I would say that compared to many universities, we have a good quality compared to the tuition fee. Yes, there is this link to the admission services page about the scholarships and tuition fees. And if you like, you can also ask from admissions about more about the details. We have one of our former master students, current doctoral students. Um, would you like? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank. Thanks for the nice presentation. Yeah. It. It actually. Uh, reflect very much of uh, on on the kind of uh, degree program that we have here and having been a having studied for my master's here in Alta University I I can tell about the benefits of the 
how the program is coordinated and the kind of, of very positive learning outcomes that we have here. For example, I came, uh, I saw someone asking question about coming from civil engineering uh, to, to study the mechanical engineering. For example, my bachelor was from energy technology, but uh, uh, I had a strong desire for the mechanical engineering. So when I got accepted into the program, I found very interesting, for example, the idea of the common studies where you can first test the others and take different courses from the different topic groups and then try to find where your interests are and then align and plan your elective and advanced studies in, in that in, in according to your interest and what part interests you most. Yeah, and, and also about the thesis, master thesis, th those are very good opportunities like uh, Professor then said that it bridges your the the it bridges it serves as a bridge between uh, your master your master studies and 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 the life after. So I got, for example, thesis in the in in our mechanical engineering department in a hydrogen embrittlement uh, research group, and then after I, I assisted in developing their uh, custom made thermodesorption spectroscopy uh, machine. And after I continue as a PhD in, in the same research group in the department. So there are a uh, limitless number of opportunities that, uh, that can arise for, from studying for your master degree here in, in Alto and in the mechanical engineering department. Yeah, if, if any of you has any question you would like to ask a former student, of course you can ask me, but I can say that overall it's been a good experience. Yeah. Um, interesting question about um, what if your work experience has been affected by by the pandemic with some some part time work and some freelancing as well as full time work. Um, work experience is not a requirement for participation in in the program. Um, it is perfectly acceptable for students to consider their bachelor's education and their, their master's education as, as one continuous process and, and to know right at the end of their bachelor studies that they, they, they want to continue with, with studying um, right away. Um, so, so the question for us is if you have focused on your studies, um, then that's fine. But, but if you have some, some time in between, that, then we would like to know your perspective on, on what what you have what you have learned and, and how your life experience um, that makes 
studying now the, the right thing for you and makes you the, the right student for, for us. So this should not create any problems, um, but it, it could be an opportunity to explain your, your, your motivation and strengthen your, your application that way. Oh, excellent question. If someone is interested in robotics and control systems, should you choose mechatronics or automation and electrical engineering? Um, I, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here and answer no. Um, you probably wanted to hear which one of the two, um, but I, I would like to think that there is sufficient freedom within both of these programs 
that it, it is possible to do something that um, would go very much towards mechanical engineering within automation and electrical engineering uh, and go conversely that within mechanical engineering I'm, I'm quite sure that within the that by taking courses from the mechatronics topic group and electives from the school of electrical engineering you can go very far in, in the direction of automation and electrical engineering. Uh, if I can add a few words also. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I, of course I haven't taken courses from the autom automation and electrical engineering, but my minor was in mechatronics. And uh, there are several courses that uh, uh, equip you with the right kind of knowledge and learning experience also for the robotics and control system. For example, there are me mechatronic basic course. There are two courses, advanced mechatronic and mechatronic basic that, uh, that provides also hands-on uh, 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 exercises that, that, that help in that, in that sense. Also in the uh, hydraulic system uh, course, also there are uh, hands-on exper uh, experiment so assignments that that help also with people that have interest in the in the robotics so it it i'm not sure how more advanced it is in the automation or electrical engineering but in the mechatronic course in mechanical engineering it's quite interesting there the mechatronic minor We, we do cross list a number of courses from automation and electrical engineering of advanced studies in mechanical engineering. So you don't even have to put those in electives if you want to take them together with, with our program. You can put them in advanced studies and leave the electives for things that are even more on the robotic side or on the electronic side of robotics and control systems. But, but definitely robotics and control system is something that you can do within our program too. Okay, um, if there are no further questions, um, then I, I think we can, we can wrap this up. Thank you for joining and thank you for your interest in, in our program. I like to think that we have a very diverse program and a very flexible program that lets lots of students do what they want to do and prepares them for a career in which they get to do what they want to do. Um, I think that having such a program is strengthened by having interesting applicants with strong backgrounds that are not necessarily strictly focused on mechanical engineering, but contribute to it. Thank you. Um, good luck with your application. And perhaps we will see you next autumn, some of our students. Goodbye for now. <laughs>